So let's begin, my dear friends. If you didn't open your source sheets, please open your source sheets, download them, print them. If you go to theyeshiva.net, you'll see the first video. It should say Hasidus Monday. And over there on top, there's a green icon, which should say download. And when you click on it, you can open the source, download the source sheets, so you could follow inside. Or on the right side of the screen, you'll see source sheets. And if you click on that, it will replace the video. So you could just follow inside. We're going to learn today Be'ezer Hashem Yisbarich, a siche, an address, a talk by the Lubavitcher Rebbe on Parshas Vayigash, published in Lekutei Sichos, Chelek Chafhe, Lekutei Sichos, Volume 25, Parshas Vayigash. It was said by the Lubavitcher Rebbe in the summer of 1981, Shabbos Parshas Chukas, Tovshin Mem Aleph, and as I said, published in his Lekutei Sichis on Vayigash, volume 25. Let's begin inside. It's in Yiddish, obviously, for those who don't understand such a Yiddish so well. I'll translate and explain. Be'ezer Hashem. Se'if Aleph. The Sicha actually begins to address a Pesach in Tehillim. In Tehillim, capital pay. And uh, many people know these psukim, sometimes from the psukim themselves, and sometimes from the nigan, from the song. And there's a fascinating expression in this pasuk that opens up a vista, opens up a door to appreciate a dimension, an aspect of these parshiyas that uh, can easily be overlooked, but must be studied well. Aleph. Afen pasuk, Yeroi Yisrael hazina. In Tehillim Kapitel Pei, Pasuk Beis, the psalmist says, speaks about Hashem, open up, bring up a Tehillim, the Pasuk says, as they, begins, the second Pasuk says, Roye Yisrael Hazina, Noye Katsayn Yosef, Yosef Hakruvim Haifiyah, Many of you know, you know the niggin on these words. What does this mean? O shepherd of Israel, listen to us. He who leads Joseph like flock, like sheep. He who dwells between the Kruvim, Hoifia, appear in our lives. So this is the request of the psalmist, of the writer of this poem, Tehillim chapter 80. The shepherd of Israel, Roya Yisrael, he shepherds Israel like a shepherd who shepherds his flock. Hazina, listen. The one who leads Yosef like flock should appear. We know there's a problem here, right? What's the issue? I understand Roya Yisrael, he shepherds Yisrael. Noya Katsayin Yosef, he leads Yosef like a flock. We're talking about Yisrael. We're talking about the Jewish people. We're not talking about Yosef. Yosef was an individual person. So comes Rashi, and what does Rashi say? Taich Rashi, Kol Yisrael Nikrayim Al Shem Yosef Lifishu Pirnesom V'chilkelom B'mei Haraf. Yosef is an expression for all the Jewish people. When we say Hashem leads Yosef like a flock, he doesn't mean he leads the person called Yosef. Yosef is one of the names that defines Klal Yisrael. Just like when you say Roya Yisrael, it doesn't mean he shepherds one Jew named Yisrael. It means Roya Yisrael, Yisrael is Israel. All of Bnei Yisrael, all of us are called Yisrael. Every Jew is called Yisrael. Afal Pishachata, Yisrael, we all come from Yisrael. And we're all called Yisrael, that's the definition of a Jew. Am Yisrael, Bnei Yisrael, Eretz Yisrael, Tyrus Yisrael, Elakei Yisrael. Yosef says Rashi also refers. It's one of the names that defines the Jewish people. Hashem leads Yosef like a flock, means he leads the Jewish people like flock. 
Why is our name Yosef? Why is our name Yosef? Our name is Yisrael because we all come from Yaakov and Yaakov's ultimate name was Yisrael. And that's where the Torah calls us Bnei Yisrael and then Am Yisrael. Got it. Yosef was one of the sons of Yaakov. There's Jews who come from Yosef. Ephraim and Menashe come from Yosef. But uh, most Jews didn't come from Yosef. All Jews come from Yisrael. You can't be a Jew if you didn't come from Yisrael unless you convert it. Maybe you've come from Esau, but you convert it. But in terms of g- genealogy of the Jewish people, you come from Yisrael, not from Yosef necessarily. And yet here it's clear, Noye Katsoin Yosef is referring to the Jewish people as Yosef. So Rashi explains, because Yosef sustained and fed the Jewish people during the days of famine. As the Torah discusses in the parashas of Yigar, that it was Yosef who fed, he sustained his father, his brothers, and the entire home of his father, which means all of his nephews and all of his nieces. He gave them all bread according to what was needed by each child, the necessity of each child. So when they had no food and they had no means for survival, it was Yosef Avinu who, Yosef HaTzadik, Yosef HaTzadik, who came to the rescue. This is what Rashi tells us in his commentary on Kapitel, on Kapitel Pei in Tehillim. As he says in footnote 2, Al Derech Zeb Metzudas David. The Metzudas David makes a similar commentary. The Metzudas David says that Yosef Kilkel, he sustained the Shvatim in Egypt and therefore they all assumed his name. The Pashtus let it meant. Now, what does this mean? So, the literal explanation is: We bowed Yosef at the Bnei Yisrael gespeist in a Zeit von Hunger, but as meant as a Kim is given up hanging in Yosef. The fire went to Hunger of an Al Shmei, Al Shem Zev, a set of Galton Zev Metzies. It seems like the explanation is straightforward. Yosef is the one who sustained and fed the Jewish people in a time of devastating famine. In other words. Yosef wasn't just a brother, an important brother, a contributing brother. It, Yosef, Yosef did something else. He ensured their existence. Their existence during that time was dependent on Yosef. So therefore, they assume his name. As he says, Eretuvgalt and Zayametzias. Just because somebody gives me bread, therefore I take on his name. But it means that ultimately, they're all, they all became dependent on Yosef, so they assumed his name because it was Yosef who ensured their identity. There would be no Klal Yisrael without Yosef. Heaven forbid, everybody would have died. Everybody would have been obliterated. It's Yosef who ensured that there is a Kiyum, that there is a Yisrael. The only reason there is Yisrael is because there is a Yosef. Yosef, he says, held up. He endured, he made sure that their Metzius existed. And therefore, they assumed the name Yosef. It's so to speak, like he, he becomes their source of existence, their source of identity, their source of endurance. So therefore they're called Yosef. The Yosef, this explains the expression of Rashi. He fed them and sustained them. B'meharav during days of hunger. The truth is, it says when Yaakov came to Mitzrayim, the hunger stopped. That's what Chazal tells us. Rashi brings it in Parshas Vayigash. So when actually, when the puzzle is Vayichalkel Yosef es Echav, there was already no hunger. He fed them because he was the Prime Minister of Egypt, but at that time the hunger ceased. But Rashi uses the word Pirnisam Bimeharov, Chilkalam Bimeharov. It's true. Yosef told his brothers 
I'm going to nurture you for another five years because there's going to be a hunger for five years. But Yosef didn't know when Yaakov is going to come down to Mitzrayim. The hunger is going to cease. But nonetheless, Rashi has to say, because Yosef fed the brothers before they moved to Egypt. When they came to Egypt, there was no food, right? They came the first time, and then they came a second time to buy food because they were hungry. Everybody was hungry. And he fed them. They had to come down to Egypt. Also, the Tosefta says, Tosefta Masech Tosefta, as he brings in eight, that when Yaakov passed away, the hunger returned. And that's why Yosef told them, I'm going to continue to feed you. So it's because of the hunger years, when they didn't have food on their own. In other words, they would have not survived. So that's when everybody could see that the existence of the Jewish people is attributed to who? Yosef. Yosef is the one responsible for their kiyum. There's been no existence of the Jew. There's no Yisrael without Yosef. And therefore, we all take on the name Yosef. <laughs> it's like, I'm Yosef, you're Yosef. I happen to be Yosef. But uh, you're Yosef. Why are you Yosef? Because you're also Yosef. Your existence is also attributed to Yosef. It's due to Yosef. Yosef. You're here because of Yosef. And that's why the Pasuk says, Noye Katsoin Yosef. This is Seif Aleph of the Sikh. This is the basic understanding of how to understand of how to learn this Rash. Now, before before we go further in the Sikh, I just want to take note of something. The Rebbe is going to ask some questions here and develop a deeper understanding in this Rashi. But before we get that, who we get to that, I think here it's important to take note about how to learn something. You learn a Pasik, you learn Rashi, yeah? You could go through this Rashi. Why are we called Yosef? Because he gave us food. Okay. Somebody who gives me food, I'm, I have his name. I'm very happy you gave me food. You did me a big favor. You took me into your business. You sustained me. That's why I get your name. So that's why he explains. It's important. You, you learn something. You take it apart. You dissect it. What does this mean? What's the Havana? Just this, it gives you a derech. How to think, th- how to how to think something through, how to analyze the words of Rashi, the expression of Rashi. Mendafa befashten. But there's still something missing here. Aleph. Favazal niyidin shtendik angeruf vera mit namin yosef mishada pa'ulaf von yosef velches given mit fil yad and friyir um bloiz b'meshech von agar kurtzer zeit. What's the explanation? That Jews should always be called yosef because of something Yosef did so many, so many years ago, thousands of years ago, and he did it for a pretty short time. It was a very short time. Remember, the hunger was for seven years. Once Yaakov came to Egypt, two years into the hunger, there was no hunger anymore. In the beginning of the hunger, the children of Yaakov still had food, as Rashi says. So there was a short time, very significant time, a year, a year and a half without food is significant. There's no question. But does it, really, does it really make sense that forever we have the name Yosef because at one period, in a very short period of time, Yosef sustained the Jewish people. It seems a little difficult. And that's why the Tehillim, which is of course written thousands of years later, many thousands, which is written, which is written I should say, a long time later, because the Tehillim starts being written by David HaMelech and then the poets who followed David, there's the big discussion exactly how Tehillim was put together, the last Perik of Psachim, we discussed it when we learned the 10th Perik of Psachim, the famous Malbim, different interpretations. But you're talking about a long, long time after Yosef existed. Yosef existed, of course, at the beginning of their descent of Egypt, then there's a few hundred years before they leave Egypt, and then there's going to be another few hundred years until David HaMelech. So you're dealing with hundreds of years, hundreds or hundreds of years, hundreds and hundreds of years, And the Jews are always called Yosef because of that. Or to put it differently, let's say somebody did you a favor in your life and that favor, Mamash, saved you. You're grateful and you're grateful forever. But does does that allow for like a, a, a new name? So now you have his name. Number one. Beis, ve'ikir. But even, even a greater question. First question you could say, Jews have Akara Satayv, yeah, we're always grateful, so we're always called Yosef. We remember that Yosef is responsible for our existence. But he says there's a bigger question here. The Toichen Akas of Rei Yisrael Hazin and Nei Katsayin Yosef, Yosef Akruvim Haifiyah, is a Bakashim Bas Mebetim Eberstim, Hazin Haifiyah. 
wo der von uns verstand, als mit Bezeichen in Eden, als Jesus wird ausgedrückt, eine Meile von Eden, welche geht so als Schuss auf Mille Abakosche von Hazina Hefia. Let's understand the context of this name Yosef. We're speaking to Hashem. The psalmist is saying, Roya Yisrael, the one who shepherds Yisrael, Hazina, listen. Noye Katsan Yosef, the one who leads his flock, the one who leads Yosef like flock, the one who leads Yosef, the Jew like Haifia, appear to us. In other words, this is a request. We're beseeching Hashem. Hazina, listen. Haifia, appear. This means that the fact that he's defining the Jewish people as Yosef is trying to express a certain mila, a certain virtue of the Jewish people, which adds a merit that warrants the fulfillment of the request. Hazina, haifia. Because I'm trying to say something positive, something beautiful. Why suddenly here, from all the psukim of Tanakh, does the psalmist decide to define us as Yosef? Why suddenly? You have an explanation why we could be called Yosef. Why suddenly here? Apparently this name warrants the request, Hazina, listen to me. Haifia, appear to us. Nachme, from them was the red to Negus and Yosef, come in noch dem ersten Teil of Akasha, Rei Yisrael Hazina, is mashma, as the name in Yosef is a greaser of my levid and Shem Yisrael. Al kol panem benegei dem inyin hamedubin in dem mizma. Vorum dev seder at filis kemuhum in a kalala kovet, fria dem mot men a klender a mile, and the nacho befratib does it nit mas, because men meisif a greaser of my lechuli. What is more, he says in brackets, first it says, Rei Yisrael Hazina, and then it says, Noye Katsan Yosef. It sounds like, it seems, that it, the, at least in one aspect, the name Yosef, describing the Jews as Yosef, is even a greater, comp- represents a deeper and greater quality, even than the name Yisrael. Even if it's not in everything that way, at least in terms of the context, the theme discussed in this Mizmer Tehillim, there's something in the name Yosef that is even greater than the name Yisrael. Because generally when you pray, the, when you daven, the order is min hakal, from the lighter to the heavier, from the easier to the harder. Now the first, you mention Yisrael, which is a smaller virtue. And then you say there's even more. No, you could, you're not going to go downwards, you go upwards. Not only are they Yisrael, they're Yosef. Especially if the first fila is not enough, so therefore you add more. Not only are they Yisrael, they're Yosef. In other words, it's even greater than Yisrael in a certain degree, to a certain degree. Is not moving. With what is that? Was Yosef pinned on the chilkel of Meharav? As chus of Meilef, I call Yisrael. I does all piles and I call upon him helping in them. Has in I fear. If so, the question is: the fact that Yosef sustained them during the hunger represents the virtue of Yosef. How does that become a merit and representing the virtue and the great quality of all the Jewish people that this should affect, or at least it should assist in the hazina? Listen to us. And Haifia appeared to us. Those are the two questions. Gimel. V'yesh leimer nekudus habir bazeh. You could say, says the Lubavitcher Rebbe, you could say the point of the explanation is as follows. Yedet der inyen gashmi heb tzichon v'et nishtal shel fum mekere haruchni. Every physical thing in the world, every physical encounter, experience, phenomenon, event, every physical reality, physical matter, everything, begins, these are critical words. And those who are familiar with Chassidus a little bit know that this theme comes up often. Everything in the physical world does not begin as just a pure physical phenomenon. It always begins from its spiritual source. The word that he uses here is, it's nishtalshel. Nishtalshel, from the word shalshelis, which means a chain, represents an evolution or a devolution. It evolves. Everything that begins in the physical, everything in the physical world begins in the spiritual realms, and then it evolves. Its energy evolves or devolves until it assumes the physical incarnation. al didan the same is true in our case. Das was pernis from the chilkalam and meharav, the pashtus begashmi is. Das was the parnasa gashmi from basis shel be meharav is giving up hanging from Yosef. Nam tzichter from was heretz egishpais be meharav beruchni is. The same is true here. 
when Rashi says that Yosef fed and sustained the Jewish people during the famine, literally, physically, he gave them physical grain, physical food to sustain them and their families. It doesn't only represent the physical food, the physical bread. The fact that the physical livelihood and sustenance of the Jewish people during the years of famine was dependent on Yosef begins with the fact that he also sustained them spiritually. He gave them spiritual sustenance. He gave them emotional sustenance. He gave them psychological sustenance. He gave them metaphysical sustenance. He gave them the spiritual nutrients that they need. It evolves also in the fact that he provided them with the bread and the grain and the food that they needed in the time of hunger. Rav begashmis is verbunden mit dem Rav beruchnis. Generally, when you speak of a famine physically, it's not just a famine physically. Again, it begins because there is a spiritual famine. As he says in 14 Kamashinemar in Amma is Ches, right? Rav Lishmaya is Divrei Hashem, the famous expression of the Navi. There's a hunger, and the Navi says, What type of hunger am I talking about? A hunger to hear the word of God. An emotional hunger, an emotional thirst, a spiritual thirst. There is physical hunger and there is a spiritual hunger. Spiritual hunger is... <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. Spiritual hunger is... Physical hunger is a person doesn't have food. Spiritual hunger is a person... <laughs> doesn't have meaning, doesn't have purpose, doesn't have direction. A person is struggling. A person doesn't have happiness. A person is filled with anxiety. We always manage to get the word anxiety in, don't we? <laughs> a person is overwhelmed with stress. A person is thirsty for, for Hashem, for a relationship. It's a time of concealment. Things are eclipsed. You know what Yosef's greatness is? He is the one who knows how to feed us during our hunger. Not just physically, but also spiritually. So when Rashi says, Yosef pirnesam vechilkelam b'mei harav, and therefore nekroim Hashem Yosef, he's talking physically, but he's just talking about spiritually. Undas is the pirush apnimi in yahu pirnesam vechilkelam b'mei harav. And this is the pirush, and he says pirush apnimi. Pirush apnimi means, of course it means basically that he fed them physical food. But beneath that, the pnimius of that is that he gave them spiritual food. Yosef at mashpia given to base Yisrael from zayna milus at chunus nilus, mit velchem and can iber kumen arav eretas and zayarangi given and anayfun from pirnus some vechilkalam adals aven and zayar parnasu and spies as zayarangi and zayar be pnimius and gavon and damo basu kipsada. O may high time of it and Eden at safe call a day that's under of Mishem Yosef, which had them was Pirna some Bechilkel and be may her love, I'll do the damage by Claudius, no Engevarts will give out on the Tommy the mile of Navadus Yosef. This is the deeper, the underlying interpretation of Rashi's words. He fed them and sustained them during the times of hunger. Yosef gave to the Jewish people a gift, certain quality, certain characteristics that allow you to overcome and endure. Not just through a physical hunger, but a spiritual hunger. And he didn't only give it to them. Pirnesam vechilkalam. Rashi uses two words. Pirnesam vechilkalam. Physically it means pirnesam. He gave them parnasa, livelihood. Chilkalam means he fed them. Spiritually it means he didn't just give them something that was lost. Pirnesam means it became their parnasa. It became their livelihood. He, he sustained them. In other words, when you eat something, it becomes part of you. We are what we eat. It's not a cliche. As he says, the food that we eat becomes damu basa kipsara. It becomes, it goes into your bloodstream, becomes part of your blood and becomes part of your flesh. Yosef gave them these qualities to the point that it became part of the structure of the Jewish people. Yeah. I want you to notice the, the, the meticulousness of how the Rebbe is presenting this idea. Not just saying Yosef had something. Pirnesim, he gave it, he shared it with us, he taught it to us. It became part of the, if you wish, part of the DNA of the Jewish psyche. Now we can understand why forever we're called Yosef. This is the reason the Pasuk says, that for all the generations, Jews will assume the name Yosef. Why? 
Because what Yosef gave them at that point was not just a gift for a few months or for a year or for a year and a half or for two years or whatever the amount, which is also very significant. But Yosef planted a seed in the Jewish soul, in the Jewish brain. He imbued something into the, it, something became interwoven into the fabric of Jewish history, of Jewish psyche. He uses the word eingewurzelt. Through the work of Yosef, something became rooted. It became embedded. Eingewurzelt is a varzel is a shoyrish, right? It's like you, you plant a seed and it develops roots. And now the roots take hold in the earth. Yosef planted something and now it took hold into the Jewish people forever. Latomit this quality of Yosef. And that's why we are named Yosef, because there's something in us that belongs to Yosef. And when we describe the Jews as Yosef, we're describing this gift that he gave the Jewish people. It's not just he did them once a huge favor which saved their lives. It's much deeper than that. Ooh, according to this, it's so gishmak. Why suddenly in this capital to Hillim, the psalmist decides to give us a new name, Yosef. Right here. When we speak about Rai Yisrael Azina, because this Mizmer has something unique. It addresses the three experiences of exile that the Jewish people will endure, which is why this Mizmer has something very interesting in it, as the Mepharshim say. Three times, Eloikim Tzevais Hashivenu Ha'er Panecha Venevashaya, which is also part of the Nigin. Three times. Which means Hashem, return us, show us your countenance, and rescue us. And then again, and at the end of the capital again, three times. So Rashi says right in the beginning of capital pay, Rashi says, this is a psalm in which is intimated the three experiences of exiles of the Jewish people, and he's davening for them. And that's why it says three times, and Rashi says that this goes through different stages of Jewish history. So you have the Babylonian exile, you have the Greek exile, and then you'll ultimately have the Roman, the exile caused by Rome. Rashi says later, Hashivenu from Golis Bavel, Hashivenu Mibne Yavon. There's three Hashivenus, three times return us, representing three exiles that the Jewish people will endure. If this is the case, it's Geschmack, why he opens up with Yosef. The one who leads Yosef like the flock, please appear to us in our lives because. The primary virtue and merit of Jews in Gullus is connected to Yosef, who is the one who taught them how to live during a time of hunger, physical hunger and spiritual hunger. And in a way, this is even greater than the virtue of Yisrael, which is why we go, to, we say, Raya Yisrael Hazina, and then we say, and even more, if Yisrael didn't help, Naya Katsain Yosef, Haifia, as will be explained. This is the basis, the introduction to the answer. So when we say Yosef fed the Jews physically, it represents something deeper yet. What is it that he gave the Jewish people? What is the spiritual hunger that Yosef somehow managed to help us survive? 
Dalit, the Hasbara in them, the explanation in this. Yosef had sich eis getelt von der andere Schwatem der Mitwa says, der einzige, was is given in Golos by an Ish um Melech Zor, Nishbal Bein Hagoyim. Loi mi boi in the Merstens man nach dem Vihuret Mitzrayim, als Evet bebeis Peitifur und danach als Asser bebeis Hasoyar, dann afilu in Spätin Dickens man beschasse ich schon geworden am Mishnah Melech. Was so bei Ladech, Allah Yari Mishes Yadi, was Ragle Bukhalar zum Zrayim, is it a begiven unter der Schlitte van Hage von Pare, Hakise Egdal Mimek. Euch sein Schlitte in ganz Eretz mit Zrayim is given als Mishnah le Melech von Pare. Yosef was unique and different from all of his brothers. He is the only one who lived for years and years and years, in fact, his entire life, most of his life, in exile under a foreign dictator, under a foreign boss, under a foreign king. Or as the Rashi puts it in Vayechi Nishba, he was kidnapped, Lebein HaGoyim, and he grew up and he lived much of his life among Gentiles under their authority, not independent. First, of course, in the beginning, when he was just sent down to Egypt, he was a slave. So not only was he not an independent person, he was owned, that's what slavery was in ancient times. He was owned by his, ma- by his master, Paitifa. Then he was cast into prison. So now he was a prisoner. Not only was he a slave, he was Mamasha prisoner. He was confined in prison. But even later, he was by Paitifa, and then he was 12 years in prison. Even later, at the age of 30, he ultimately becomes the prime minister of Egypt. He's still not the boss. Pare says, nobody can lift up their arms or legs without you in Egypt. But Pare says, the throne is always greater than you. In other words, you're the prime minister, you're the viceroy, you're the Mishnah Lamelech, you're second in command, you're working for Pare. And as we see throughout the story, all the money that he gets for the grain, he brings to the house of Pare. The, the, the earth, the, the Pasuk discusses in Vayigash, as he says in footnote 22, everything ultimately is going to Pare. Yosef is Pare's employee. Yes, Pare gives him unbelievable authority, just like Paitifa gives him unbelievable authority, but there is a boss. Yosef is functioning under their authority. He's defer- def- None of his brothers have this life. Their bro- his bro- brothers live as a tribe, as an independent tribe, in their, in their space. Yosef is under the authority, first Paitifa, then the prison, and then Pare. Pare, he's the king. I work for Pare, I'm representing Pare, I'm the Mishnah Lamelech, I'm the second in command. Und das ist behessen mit den Chilik bepashtes zwischen Chayi und Avoidus Yosef und dem Seder Hachayim von der anderen Schwatte mit Gewerbe kamen. This is not a small thing. This represents that Yosef's mission, Yosef's Avoidus Hashem, the life of Yosef and the work of Yosef was very, very different. The system, the entire pattern of his life was different than all of his brothers. This distinction that we just saw. Yosef is the first one and the only one from all of his brothers who at an early age at 17 is now under the complete authority and domain of other people, not his family, not people who share his philosophy or faith, people who share a very different philosophy and faith and moral code as we see in the house of Petifer. And ultimately it's called Ervas Haaretz, an an immoral country in many ways which is why he was thrown into prison, because he behaved morally. <laughs> if he would have been, excuse me, if he would have been immoral, he would have not been put into prison, as the Pasuk describes in Parshish Vayeshev. <laughs> but even as the Mishnah Lamelech, he is under the authority of his boss, and his boss is Pare. This represents a whole different lifestyle. The Shvatim Zanin Gevein Roy Yitzayin. Abgesundet für den Jan, ja, Eulen, welche kennen sie Sterne in seiner Weide, Sascha. Und euch, der Melache von Neue Zeit, fadet nicht keine Anstrengung und Tür, die ihr seid. Aber Schenken Josef ist gewann vernommen mit den Jan, ja, Eulen. Früher bebeist bei Tiffa, was war ihr Gedeo, aber bei Seve, Chal, Jeschle, Nassen, Bejade. Aber da gesagt, nach Bebeis, Sascha, was Kala, Schreisem, Schamhua, ja, Eusse. Allah, es kam, wir kamen, wenn er ist gewonnen, Mischnall, Melch. Und hat angefühlt mit alle in Jan, mit Zreim. Alpicha, Jischak, Kol, Ami. Was ist verbunden mit der Gräste Tirdes. The Shvatim were all shepherds. We see that even when Yosef was in his father's home, later when they come to Egypt, 
Yosef tells his brothers, what do they tell Pare when they're introduced to Pare? Our entire lives, we were just shepherds. That was their vocation. They were Royetzoin. What's the concept? What's the reality of a Royetzoin? He's segregated. He doesn't live in the, in the, in the pressure cooker, hustling and bustling of an intense urban life where there's a lot of action and chaos and confusion and stress and anxiety, the shepherd, by definition, spends time in nature, segregated from a very brute and material world. Shepherding sheep or other such flock, there's a serenity there, there's a tranquility there. You spend time in quiet places. Sheep don't uh, (laughs) hang out between skyscrapers Wall Streets and stock markets and airports. They're isolated. They need their pasture, (coughs) their grass, their canals, their lakes, their brooks, their streams of water. There's a serenity there. It's farm, the life of the farmer. Here it's not actually the farmer, it's the life of the shepherd, even less. The farmer is toiling with the earth and it's not so simple to toil with the earth, fighting, fighting the weeds and the bacterias. So the, all the shvatim, they were right sign, which is a type of, of, of work that takes you somewhat away from the involvement, the dense and intense involvement in a brute world. And therefore, there's very little distractions to your communion with nature and with transcendence and with the spiritual heartbeat of the universe, with the spiritual symphony of the universe. Also, the work of the shepherd is not so stressful. It's a more serene lifestyle. Yosef's life takes on a very different form. In Potiphar's house, it says, he puts him in charge on his entire estate. In the prison, he suddenly becomes in charge, everything that's going on in the prison. And then he becomes prime minister of Egypt. Pari says, you are in charge for this whole nation. (laughs) <laughs> he becomes one of the most powerful economists, the most powerful economist of the time, the chief economist of a superpower, al Yisha Kol Ami. This is a stressful life. This is a life that can easily induce a lot of anxiety. It's overwhelming. There's a lot, a lot of pressure. Yosef is not isolated in the mountains of nature, singing songs, spending time with sheep, with his harp or his flute or his violin, meditating in transcendence, living in a spiritual cocoon of serenity where he can spend so much time in mindful meditation or prayer or study or reflection. That's not Yosef's life. Yosef is in the pressure cooker. (laughs) He's now the prime minister of the most powerful country of the world. And it's a time of crisis. Despite this, all the pressures that he was involved with completely did not shake him up and destroy his serenity. It did not take him out of his equilibrium, his core, always remained aligned simultaneously with being involved in everything he was involved in which was an awesome responsibility and duty nonetheless he stood and he retained and he remained betachlis advekus with ultimate advekus means connection cleaving he remained completely one aligned and connected with Hashem with godliness His inner peace, his inner alignment with who he is and with the essence of the universe, Hashem, was never disturbed. That's that's very, very unique because usually you get torn apart. You get anxious, you get stressed, you get overwhelmed. Even if you're a very, very good operator, you're a great CEO or a great CFO and a great prime minister and a great leader. When this becomes your whole life and you have so much stress, it's very hard to retain that unique relationship with transcendence. The brothers can do it because they were shepherds. Their lifestyle afforded them this type of relationship. But Yosef, by definition, should have been robbed from this. And yet he was not. 
Bei der anderen Schwarte mit seinem Dweckes, bei Schem gewähren, verbunden mit seinem Matze von des Beudedus. Mit seinem Sein abgesundet von Jonny Eulam. Und Moven, also in Azaz Seder Havoide, ist der Matze von Gallus, sein unter der Schlitte von Azor, als Tiro und Sterz und Dweckes bei Schem. Darf ich mit der Havoide von Josef? Was euch sein, die Kinder Tirdes von Jonny Eulam, ist er verblieben, betachtet hat Dweckes bei Schem, kann man durch gehen, der Matze von Gallus. Bei den anderen Tribes, their Dweckes, Their oneness with Hashem was dependent on their state of his baidados. His baidados comes from the word badod, in the positive sense, isolation. A person often needs that. You just need to go away from the stress. You have to be able to hear the koil de mama daka, the silent inner voice, the rhythm of the cosmos. And a lifestyle with so much responsibility, so much to do, and involvement in it. And not just involvement as an employee, you're the boss. The buck stops here. You're under party, but the buck stops here. It, it just, it, it takes you over. You fall apart. Or at least you just become completely immersed in it. So for them, they could be in Vekos. You know why? Because they were in his Baidadus. They were isolated. That's why they were shepherds. That's why they chose that vocation. This was conducive for the life of the Jew. We elaborated, up, I, I, I captured this idea very briefly in one of the Hanukkah clips, night number seven. This was their, their philosophy in life. When this is your system of serving Hashem, of course, if you're going to be in exile, you're going to be under the authority and control of somebody who is a stranger you will not be able to retain this level of intimacy. What was the Chiddush of Yosef? Yosef was under the authority of strangers, and not strangers, you know, first cousins. Strangers, those who did not grow up, grow up in the monotheistic tradition of Ram Yitzhak and Yaakov, those who did not share his views, he was completely under their control, first as, as a slave, then as a prisoner, and even as a prime minister. He was Paro's man, the brothers couldn't recognize him. He didn't even speak the language officially. He spoke Egyptian language. He was dressed in Egyptian garb. You know, he, he, had to, he had to, I wanted to say play the game, but he wasn't playing a game. You can't be a prime minister successfully and play a game. He wasn't playing a game. He was for real involved. He, and that's the Kiddush. If he was playing a game, you know, he just came to the office, you know, he checked in and then somebody else did the work and he went to learn Gemara. Wonderful. <laughs> that's not what happened. Yosef, Ayyavah, Yabai, Salasas, Malachtai. <laughs> there was malacha. He had to be, he, he couldn't just, you know, delegate the work. He was involved. Yeah, some, somebody once told me years ago, somebody was giving me advice. On he says, you can't run a company with a joystick. <laughs> Don't think you're going to sit at home and with a joystick and right, left, right, like you're playing a video game and the company's going to run. Ultimately, there's going to be too many cracks and it's going to fall apart. You've got to get involved. It's going to have to take up mental space. The Chiddush of Yosef is that immersed in all of the pressures of the world, he remains in complete, complete, he remains centered. He remains anchored. He remains always one, Dveikus, complete Dveikus. That's the Chiddush. It's the gift of Yosef that you have to acquire if you want to endure Golos. If you want to endure the vicissitudes, the fluctuations, the ups and the downs, and the experiences of the Jewish people during thousands of years of exile, they had to learn the gift, the uniqueness of Yosef. What was Yosef's power? What was Yosef's gift? And that's what the Sikh is going to continue to develop. Be'ezer Hashem, we will resume Wednesday morning, 7.30 a.m. We will resume. So if, hey, let me take some questions. We'll start with the chat. First question, how indeed did Yosef do this and his brothers did not do this? Well, this was, this was a special gift that Yosef had 
and we're going we're going to, we're going to explain this we're going to explain this a little more in the next year what was exactly this gift what is it that Yosef had that his brothers didn't have how does this explain why Yosef is mentioned here in this mizmar after Yisro we're going to get to that that's going to be towards the end of the sicha that Abba will explain the build up of Roy Yisro Hazina Noye Katsayin Yosef. I wish you all a beautiful day, an inspiring day, a meaningful day, a day in which we acquire the virtues of Yosef, that whatever comes throughout the day, you remain completely anchored in your connection, your connection with your deepest self and with the depth of reality, with the core of oral reality, the Rebbe Can you explain... Which capital can you discuss which capital David wrote and which he didn't? If you take a Sefer Tehillim and you read the introductions of the various Mepharshim, you will see the, the history of Tehillim. There are different, there's a Gemara in Psachim about it, a section in Gemara, the last Perik, Arve Psachim. We could just listen to our classes on the yeshiva.net and Mesechta Psachim. And over there, there's a long discussion about how Tehillim developed. I discussed the different perspectives. But if you'll read the introduction to Tehillim from the various Mepharshim, you can read the Radak, the Evan Ezra, the Malbim, and you will see the perspectives of how Tehillim was written. Basically, we have a collection of ten poets, ten poets that write Tehillim. Of course, there's many poems of David HaMelech, but for example, this one is Eidus La Asaf Mizmar. It's written by a man named Asaf. We have other Mizmarim that are written written by Asaf. Have a beautiful day. You're talking about um, the thing about the yeah. starving hunger and uh, something else? Spiritual hunger? Yeah, spiritual hunger, yeah. Now in these times when people, people have this problem, because nobody, nobody, um, nobody makes money and nobody, it's a difficult time, nobody, yeah. Nobody's business, 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 cash down.